So is anybody interested in doing all books of the Bible? Not today. Okay. I mean, it's an open air invitation. You want to stand up and name all 66 books of the Bible? Uh, I'll reward you. It's that way. <coughs> Exodus. It's on the board. Is it Exodus? Uh, no, it's my fault. Oh, okay. It is Exodus. I just didn't change it. All right, all right. Exodus, second chapter, 10 through 21. Read with me. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. One day after Moses had grown up, he went out to where his own people were and watched him at their hard labor. He saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his own people. Glancing this way and that, and seeing no one, he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. The next day he went out and saw two Hebrews fighting. He asked the one in the wrong, why are you hitting your fellow Hebrew? The man said, who made you ruler and judge over us? Are you thinking of killing me as you kill the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and thought, what I did must have become known. When Pharaoh heard of this, he tried to kill Moses, but Moses fled from Pharaoh and went to live in Midian, where he sat down by a well. Now a priest of Midian had seven daughters. They came to draw water and fill the troughs to water their father's flocks. Some shepherds came along and drove them away. But Moses got up and came to their rescue and watered their flocks. Why have you returned so early today? They asked. They answered. An Egyptian rescued us from the shepherds. He even drew water for us and watered the flocks. And where is he? He asked his daughters, why did you leave him? Invite him to have something to eat. Moses agreed to stay with the man who gave his daughter Zipporah to Moses in marriage. Moses. That's where we're headed today. Let's pray. Father, we are thankful for the families that you brought here today. And I pray that you bless them individually and collectively. That your spirit would speak to our minds with your thoughts. That you would open our hearts with love and understanding. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. To get to Moses, we got to go back a little bit to last week when we talked about Joseph. <clears throat> and sometimes people get the two Josephs mixed up. I'm talking about Joseph, the son of Jacob. There's also a Joseph who married Mary. And there's two different Josephs. I'm talking about the Old Testament Joseph. And then just to, to reflect on what we talked about, Joseph had dreams. His brothers hated him. He was favored by his dad. Dad made a favorite coat for him. Joseph was falsely incarcerated for rape when Potiphar's wife couldn't have her way with him. God, when he went to prison, God put him in charge of the prison. He didn't just go to the regular prison. He went to the king's prison. <clears throat> a cup barrier and a baker was in that prison. And they had a dream. Joseph interpreted the dream. In the dream, the cupbearer would be restored. And the baker would be impaled. And Joseph told the cupbearer not to forget him when he was restored to the king's servants. And you know, two years later, 
Joseph was in that prison over two years. Two years later, Pharaoh had two strange dreams. And it was about skinny calves and fat corn. And he didn't understand the dream. And Joseph, the dream interpreter, interpreted the dream and Pharaoh, just to speed this up, Pharaoh made him second only to him. And the dream was about the salvation and the famine, yeah, a famine that was getting ready to destroy the land. Joseph interpreted the dream and Pharaoh appointed him. Now, and ultimately, his brothers did bow down to him just as he spoke in his dreams. But in the process of all of this, they didn't, the brothers didn't recognize Joseph. He was all made up like an Egyptian. Uh, and when they finally recognized each other, the brothers became fearful of Joseph because in those days, he would have killed everybody. I mean, for what they did to him, they thought that he was going to kill him. And Joseph says, no, be happy. What you thought was bad, God was at the head of it. And there's a scripture, the 50th chapter of Genesis 19 through 21. Joseph said to them, he was talking to his brothers, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended harm to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he assured them and spoke kindly to them. And then he did something else. He arranged through Pharaoh for the Hebrews to move to Goshen. And Jacob, his father, was reunited with Joseph. And we also know that Jacob made Joseph promise that if, if and when and they leave that country, that they would not leave his body. It's kind of like he foresaw something that no one else did. Now, Moses. Moses was born during the time when Pharaoh decided to do something about the growing population amongst the Hebrews, Israelites. 400 years have passed since Joseph. It's 400 years later. Joseph is long dead. And the Hebrews had become slaves in the land of the Egyptians. And Pharaoh ordered death, death of all the newborn male children amongst the Israelites. But the midwives, rather than listen to Pharaoh, they listened to God. They didn't kill those babies. They did not. So Pharaoh ordered something else. Pharaoh said, throw them in the river. And let the crocodiles feed on them. Let them feed the crocodiles. The name Moses means drawn forth, taken out of the water. He was the youngest son of Amram and Jochebed, 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 the family of Kohat. And the story of the water, of rescue from the water by Pharaoh's daughter and her adoption of him as her son and giving him the royal upbringing charmed our hearts. In the 50s, that far back, I was a little boy. Cecil B., Cecil B., you could uh, depend on who you are. Cecil B. DeMille made a movie that's still around, and it was a beautiful movie, The Ten Commandments. I watched that movie as a kid at least 10 times. 
And as an adult, I probably watched it another 10 times. It's on the circuit right now. Technicolor, 10 Commandments. Eastman Kodak. It was a beautiful movie, but it was a movie. Good entertainment. Modified truth at best. But many, many people in the world think that movie was biblical. And they look at that movie and they get misconceived because they'd rather look at the movie than to read the book. In that movie, Moses did not know he was Hebrew. That's a lie. In the Bible, Moses always knew who he was. He always knew. He knew he was Hebrew. It got him in trouble for his conflict with the Egyptians. Moses knew he was a hero, and he jumped the gun. He jumped the gun. He thought that God was going to make sure everybody knew that God sent him. But God didn't tell Moses to do what he did. Look at Acts, the seventh chapter. The writer of Luke's also wrote Acts. Dr. Luke, <clears throat> 20 to 38. At that time, Moses was born, and he was no ordinary child. For three months, he was cared for in his father's house. When he was placed outside, Pharaoh's daughter took him and brought him up as her own son. Moses was educated in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was powerful in speech and action. When Moses was 40 years old, he decided to visit his fellow he Israelites. He saw one of them being mistreated by an Egyptian. So he went to his defense and avenged him by killing the Egyptian. Listen to this. Moses thought that his own people would realize that God was using him to rescue them. But they did not. The next day, Moses came up on two Israelites who were fighting. He tried to reconcile them by saying, Men, you are brothers. Why do you want to hurt each other? But the man who was mistreating the other pushed Moses aside and said, Who made you ruler and judge over us? Do you want to kill me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? When Moses heard this, he fled to Midian where he settled as a foreigner and had two sons. After 40 years had passed, an angel appeared to Moses in the flames of a burning bush in the desert near Mount Sinai. When he saw this, he was amazed at the sight. As he went over to look more closely, he heard the Lord's voice. I am the God of your father's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses trembled with fear and did not dare to look. Then the Lord said to him, Take off your sandals. The place where you're standing is holy ground. I have indeed seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their groaning and have come down to set them free. Now come, I'll send you back to Egypt. This is the same Moses whom they had rejected with the words, Who made your ruler and judge? He was sent to be their ruler and deliverer by God himself through the angel who appeared to him in the bush. He led them out of Egypt and did wonders and miraculous signs in Egypt at the Red Sea and for 40 years in the desert. This is that Moses who told the Israelites, God will send you a prophet like me from your own people. He was in the assembly in the desert with, with the angels who spoke to him in Mount Sinai and with our fathers, and he received living words to pass on to us. Moses. You know, Moses at the top of everything. I have a question. Why do we expect perfection 
of ourselves and of our associates? Why do we expect perfection? We are impatient with our shortcomings and with each other. We tend to be that way. Maybe not this church, but other churches. Whenever we feel like that, whenever you feel like that, you should look again at Moses. The life of Moses. A second look at Moses' life will help us get back into perspective. Here's a man that did not become effective for God until he was 80 years old. The life of Moses can be divided into three 40-year segments. He spent the first 40 years in Egypt, nursed by his mother and taught by Egyptian schools. He spent the second 40 years in the desert, nursed by solitude and taught by God. He spent the final 40 years with his Hebrew people in the wilderness, nursed by trials, discouragement, and tests. And he was taught the law. He, was, he received the law from God in his own hands. Dwight L. Moody a preacher gave this explanation to this remarkable biography of Moses. Moody says, Moses spent his first 40 years thinking he was somebody. He spent the second 40 years learning that he was nobody. And he spent the third 40 years discovering what God can do when he used a nobody. And it gives us great pleasure to know that God never gives up on us. Never. And never is superfluous. He's not like us. You know, people give up on people. God never gives up on us. <clears throat> and the best of Moses' three forties was the final forty. And just to jump ahead, he wasn't allowed to cross the Jordan River. Moses wasn't. Because Moses edified himself and not God. Now I'm just going to give you something that's not on the board. In Numbers, the 20th chapter, God tells you why Moses wasn't allowed to go across the water. And I'll tell you briefly what it was. They ran out of water. And God told Moses, speak to the rock. And the rock will give you water. But Moses slapped the rock with a stick. And he said, must I do such and such? He edified himself. And God said, because you edified yourself and you did not edify me, you will not cross the Jordan. You will die on this mountain. And he didn't come back down. I didn't write that, but you can read that. I didn't put the scripture up. It's in Numbers, the 20th chapter. You can read about Moses. Moses was a great man of faith because his mother and father was faithful. The Levites was committed to God. Their job was the sanctuary, if you remember. Of the 12 tribes, the Levite tribes set up and took down the sanctuary. They moved it whenever God told them to. And if you talk to an Israelite or a Hebrew today, most of them will say they're Levites. I don't know why, but they do. The Levites were committed to God. We are told that the baby, Moses, was protected for three months by faith. How do you keep a baby for three months? You know, babies holler, shout, and cry. They didn't have air-conditioned, soundproof buildings. They didn't have none of that stuff we have today. His mother and father feared God, and they kept that child. And it wasn't an easy task, the Bible talks about it. But reverence for God is what did it. And Moses was not the firstborn. 
he had a sister named Miriam and an older brother named Aaron. They couldn't hide him anymore, the Bible says. Something had to be done. And the Bible says with great care, his mother mixed a tar-like substance from the banks of the Nile River and covered the sides of a little basket, making it watertight. She put the basket in the water and watched it float away. And Miriam, Moses' sister, followed the basket kept an eye on the basket. God arranged for Pharaoh's daughter to get to Moses before the crocodiles. God arranged for Miriam to be available to offer to find the baby or nurse to keep him. You got to think about that. His biological mother was that nurse. The Egyptians thought of the Nile River as a god. So when she pulled that baby out of the river, she thought God gave the baby to her, their God, not Yahweh. Pharaoh's daughter opened the basket. She saw the child and she had pity on him. Moses' sister Pharaoh asked Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call a nurse for you from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? And she said, yes. But that Miriam, Miriam never mentioned that the nurse would be the baby's mother. Then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Moses' mother, take the child away, nurse him for me, and I'll give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. Wow. She not only got our child back from the edge of death, but she got paid to raise him. Only God, only God can do that. That's no coincidence. God fixed all of those things so that that baby could live. And he fixed the heart of Pharaoh's daughter so that she would claim him. Unlike today's youth that's weaned off the bottle by the time near 15, 16 months. You know, the kids, we take the bottle away, start giving them a little mesh bean, da-da-da. In ancient time, the child wasn't weaned from the mother until they were five or six years old. You could look this up yourself. Five, six-year-old still nursing mom. What am I saying? I'm saying when she gave Moses back to Pharaoh, he knew everything about the Hebrews too. The movie just entertained us. You got to go to the Bible to get the real story. <clears throat> and Moses... The people were arrogant. It wasn't just a small group of people. Thousands. Actually, they said it was close to a million. Thousands of people was with Moses. And they became arrogant. And God made them walk around in the desert for 40 years because of their arrogance. And the Bible says for 40 years, their shoes did not wear out. Their clothes did not wear out. They stayed the same. They were led by a cloud in the daytime and a fire at night. You know, we find that hard to believe. It sounds like a storybook. It sounds like something out of a fairy tale. Go read it. It's not a fairy tale. It happened just like God said. And if you don't have the spirit of God in you, that's just a fairy tale. But with the spirit of God, you understand what God did. This is the beginning. His Moses in the Passover was like the first Christ. 
And when our ways please God, he will take care of our enemies one by one, day by day. He will take care of situations one by one, day by day. But you have to believe that he is who he says he is, that he is God, Yahweh. You want to know the rest of this story? You got to come back next week. Let's pray. Father, we are thankful for Moses. We are thankful for the spirit that endows all believers with the faith of a mustard seed. Bless our church. Help us to understand. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Let everyone say amen. amen.